All right, so today we are going to be talking about modeling. We're gonna be talking about how modeling the spread of COVID works. Uh, and so we're gonna start off with just a little bit of a discussion about what modeling is, how modeling works, the kind of things that go into modeling, and then eventually we're gonna build up to creating our own model using Python. So first of all, when you read the news, you see models mentioned all of the time. Probably like 25, 30% of the articles that you read mention the word model. But what is a model? Now, a model actually doesn't show up in just articles that say model. Models show up in any single article that talk about predictions. So anytime you see something about the number of people that COVID could kill, uh, the number of people who are infected, anything about the spread of COVID, all of these are models. Epidemiological models are just ways of predicting or describing the way that a disease will spread and the way it will act inside of a community, whether that community is the world or whether that community is something as small like New York City uh, or you know somewhere in the Midwest or anything like that. So the thing is that anytime you read an article that has something about predictions, it is actually about a model. Anytime you hear talk about flattening the curve or about how it's spreading, that is a model. Anytime people talk about how social distancing will or will not work, that is a model. Now the problem with models is everyone disagrees. So if you see something like the projected uh, number of people it could kill in America is between 100 and 240,000. Beyond this, there are other models that project far more or far fewer people. You'll read articles like all models are completely wrong or all models are wrong, but some are completely wrong. And the idea is that everyone just disagrees about how COVID is going to spread. Uh, and the way that it is going to affect all the people. Even though it's been ravaging the world for a while, we still don't have a good grip on it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek at, not a sneak peek, but a peek at uh, why modeling COVID is so difficult and kind of what is going to go into it when we build our own models. So the very first thing we want to do is we are going to build a model right from scratch, right now. And the way our model is going to work is it's going to say, every seven days, the infected population doubles. That's enough, that's it. This is a disease model. It is a terrible, pathetic model, but it is still a model. So let's say this. Uh, we are gonna start off with 100 people who are infected on day one. Uh, on day seven, will be up to 200 because it doubled. On day 14, we'll be up to 400 because it doubled again. Then on day 21, we will be up to 800. After that, it progresses in the exact same way, but I sure don't want to type it. So we very quickly, in under three months, by day 84, we have gone from 100 people who are infected to 4 million people who are infected. Now, this is because we chose a very, very aggressive rate of spread uh, with the infected population doubling every seven days. But this is our disease model. This is how it works. And we'll say, you know, by the, the 90th day, we will have over 4 million people infected. So you might think, Soma, you're an idiot. This is the worst model I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's too simple. You're incredibly, incredibly stupid. And the thing is that some of those things might be true, um, but oddly, when you talk about models in epidemiology, they aren't really that much more complicated than this. Sure, yes, if you get fancy, they do get complicated. But if we are talking about basic models of discussing disease spread and the way that disease works in terms of uh, recovery rates and fatalities and all of that, it's actually pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it's not that much more conceptually complicated than what we just did. So the biggest issue 
with our model right now is that we only have infected people, right? So after, you know, like a year or so, we're going to have far more people infected than there are on the planet. So we really need to talk about maybe the whole population of people, uh, the number of people that could infect infected people, things like that. So what we're going to do is we are going to split our people into three groups. The first group is susceptible people. So people who could catch the disease, people who are not infected now, but could be. The second group is going to be infected people. Infected people are people who have the disease and can spread it. Finally, uh, we have recovered or removed people. And so those are people who had the disease and cannot get it again. Now, this group includes, it's generally thought of as people who are immune. So think about the flu. If you get the flu, you're not going to get the flu again two weeks later because your body has built up an immunity to it. Uh, in this case, it will also include dead people. Uh, so people who have become immune as well as people who have died, neither of them are able to get the disease again. So congratulations, you've actually founded something called compartmental uh, epidemiology. Uh, it's the idea that we put people into these compartments. In this case, we only have three compartments, and then we just move people around in between them. Now, this particular kind of model we're working in here is the SIR model. The SIR model, because there are three groups of people, susceptible, infected, and recovered. It is probably the most basic version of a epidemiological model that you can create that is uh, compartmental. But hey, we love it, people love it, it's gonna be amazing. So this model won't tell us anything until we plug some numbers into it. So let's skip ahead to another video and we'll figure out how to plug numbers into this model.